Welcome to the first video in Unit 3. In this unit, we're going to be solving systems of equations, and we're going to be using various methods for doing this. So this, in this first video, we're going to be talking about kind of an overview of what kinds of things we're going to be doing. It's going to dovetail really nicely with what we've been doing in class. So today, the objectives are to solve the system of the linear equations by using tables and graphs and classifying systems. We're also going to talk about graphing, although we've done some graphing by hand, we're also going to learn to graph on the calculator. So the characteristics of linear systems, when we talk about linear systems, you can see that we have um, two lines, or two equations of a line that we're going to graph, and then you're going to have three situations. You're going to have two lines here that will intersect in a single point, and you realize that if they intersect, Two lines always intersect in a single point. So um, you can see down here that there will be one solution to this if we have it. And they call it consistent and independent. Independent means one. Consistent means there is one. And then independent means there's one solution to this system of equations. So if you had two equations that were consistent and independent, they would have different slopes. And the y-intercept could be either the same or different. That doesn't matter. Um, but the slopes will be different. Okay. So on the next one where you have consistent and dependent, you can see here consistent, there's a solution. But dependent means that you have the situation where you have a single line. In other words, they're both the same line. So where do they intersect? Well, they intersect um, everywhere along the line. Now, they don't intersect everywhere, because over here is everywhere, but everywhere along the line. So it says infinitely many solutions, and I've added on the same line. So this is, of course, the same line. So they have the same slope and the same y-intercept. So they intersect the y-axis at the same place, and they have the same slope. The third possibility is that they are parallel, and they never intersect. And so if they never intersect anywhere, they're inconsistent, and there is no solution. Okay, so what do parallel lines have? Well, they have the same slope. You can see that, that they're going in the same direction. But they have different y-intercepts. Okay, so that's real important that you get this down. So I'd really like for you to have the diagrams here, the consistent, independent, the definition, and then also what is happening here with the slope and the y-intercept. Take a minute to write this down that's important. Okay, here once again, you can kind of take a look at what these systems look like. And so you can see that these are two lines, one with a positive, one with a negative slope, and they intersect in one point. So they are consistent, they have a, they have a solution, and they are independent because they have um, one solution. All right, and the solution where they intersect is at negative 2, negative 3. That's the solution to this two, um, the two equations. Here you can see you have the same line, so there's infinitely many solutions along that line. Here, once again, you have two lines that intersect, and it's at the intersection point. That is where the single solution is. So here's an example of an equation that says graph the system of equations and describe the solution as consistent and independent, consistent, dependent, or inconsistent. And so the process will be to solve each equation for y, put it in slope-intercept form, and then graph each of them or analyze the slope and the y-intercept to determine which is which. All right, so I have the two equations up here. And so I have x minus y equals 5. And if I solve that for y, I'm going to add the y to the other side. I know that seems strange, but I have x equals y plus 5. Subtract the 5. And then I have x minus 5 equals y. And I'm just going to write it over here since I can. All right, on the second one, I have x plus 2y equals negative 4. This time, I'm just going to subtract the x. So I have 2y. I'm trying to keep y positive, in other words. So negative x minus 4, and then divide by 2. So I have y equals negative 1 half x minus 2. 
All right. So I'm looking at my two equations. Here are my two equations. And I note that they have two different slopes. And so if they have two different slopes, um, that means that they are going to intersect somewhere along their lines. And so that means that it has a solution, so it is consistent. And it has a solution, so it is, and one solution, so it's independent. So this is a consistent and independent system. And I didn't even, I didn't even graph it. All I did was just look at the equation. If it has two different slopes, it will intersect, and then move on from there. Okay, so let's look at these. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this second one for you to do in your notes, um, but let's do this one. So we have 9x minus 6y equals negative 6. And so if I solve each one of these for y, I have, uh, let's see, here's 9x minus 6y equals negative 6. So I have negative 6y equals negative 9x minus 6. And divide through by negative 6 and reduce, if I can, is y equals positive 3 halves x um, plus 1. And then my other one, the 6x minus 4y equals negative 4. I'm going to do negative 4y equals negative 6x minus 4. Divide through by negative 4. And I get y equals 3 halves x plus 1. Oh, all right. Well, that's awesome because if you look at these two, they're exactly alike. Okay. So if they are exactly alike, it means that they're the same line. All right, so if they're the same line, is there a solution? Do they intersect? Yes, they do. So it is consistent. However, does it have one unique solution? No, so it is dependent. Dependent. So you have the same line, um, so it's there are not parallel, right? They would have the same slope, same y-intercept. Okay, so this one here I would like for you to try in your notebook and we will talk more about this. When we get to class I'm going to show you how you graph things on a calculator because there's a definite limit to the graphing method which we talked about in class. So I will see you then.